everybody, I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, joined with my friend and co-host Aiden, and with spring training games kicking off for the Yankees this weekend, and there are three games total, two Sunday and their opening game on Saturday, there's a lot to talk about, obviously the debut of Juan Soto, different prospects that we'll get to see, um, they've announced the starters for all three of those games as well, Luis will be starting Saturday, the Sunday game that's in uh, Tampa at George Steinbrenner Field will be started by Carlos Rodon, and the game in Clearwater will be started by Marcus Stroman, so the Yankees will have a lot of different interesting storylines to follow over the weekend, and there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of buzz, baseball is back, the offseason is officially over, and we don't have to sit here and talk about whether whether, you know, a random niche free agent will sign with the Yankees or not 50 times. So, Aiden, it's uh, a very exciting time for baseball. It's a very exciting time for the Yankees. Tell me how you're doing today, my friend, and what are some things that you'll be looking for uh, off the bat in these in this weekend series? I'm doing all right, Ryan. It's nice to be back on the pod. Took a little brief hiatus just because, you know, it's the last month of the offseason and, you know, didn't, didn't want to overstep on topics every day so um but it's good to be back i'm really excited that spring training's rolling around just the content that you know just the yankee social team has been dropping has been so enjoyable just seeing soto just drop bombs but you know obviously Soto's the biggest storyline of spring training of the season but you know in spring training you're kind of just looking for uh how prospects are performing you know what players might be depth players throughout the season and you know, we're also looking at a lot of guys on the Yankees that we want to have bounce back years because if these guys have bounce back years. The Yankees are in a great spot because they're already a good team on paper. If they could get guys like Stanton to bounce back, DJ bouncing back, that's great. So what I'm looking for this weekend, you guys know me. I am the biggest Carlos Rodon believer on the planet. I've been riding that train. I'm trying to lead that train. So he's who I'm looking for this weekend. He's who's who who I'm most focused on. I'm looking at his command and I'm looking at his velo. We got reports that, you know, um, his velocity has looked great. He's been working out since I think December, like he was down in Tampa in late December, early January. And that's great to hear that is his fastball is already at like, I think somewhere around 96 to 98 miles per hour, which is phenomenal news because this time last year, he was only thrown at like 90, 92, um, so, but the most key thing for him, while the, his velo is great, we're looking at his command because that was his biggest issue last year. He was dealing with that injury and he didn't really know where his pitches were going. And you know, that that's why he blew up so much. And I saw that they, they were talking him and I think it was Matt Blake was talking about something that they fixed already is that last year he was flying open too early on his delivery. So it allowed hitters to see the ball a lot better and it allowed them to see it earlier and longer so their pitch recognition was much better and that's why he was getting teed off on so it's great that they already fixed that but we want to see how he's locating it if he's hitting his spots I imagine because it's the first spring training game we're going to see a lot of fastballs so you know we'll, we'll see a large sample of how his fastball is looking but Obviously, while we're seeing a lot of fastballs, we're gonna we're gonna I think we'll see his slider a little bit. I'd like to see that his slider is in shape because you know that's his secondary pitch. We want to see you know if it's better than last year because last year wasn't great. Um, but you know, Ryan, I think we've discussed this before. He needs a third pitch so bad, and I don't know if him and the Yankees share that belief. But if he had a third pitch. He becomes much more of a dynamic pitcher, much more of a threat. So, you know, he has that curveball and that changeup. I think I want to see that changeup more than I do than the curveball because his slider, you know, it it already in a way does what the curveball can do for him. So I want to I want to see his changeup a lot more. Um, I, I I don't know if that's something he's been working on, but you know, if if you know he's locating that and that pitch becomes more effective then he's, he's a much better pitcher throughout the year. Um, You know, he needs that third pitch really bad. And even if it's not a changeup or a curveball, maybe he added something to his repertoire that we don't know yet. Uh, I mean, if if he starts throwing a cutter, Ryan, we start throwing parades because he's a cutter. That's the Matt Blake special. Um, so if we see him throw, throw a cutter, I think that adds a whole... Uh, new level to his repertoire so that's just just one player I'm looking for uh, over this weekend but Ryan who are you looking forward to seeing the most this weekend 
Yeah, so first off, I want to talk about Rodon a little bit because you mentioned a third pitch, and I, I fully agree that a third pitch would really help him, even if it's just using his two other pitches more, maybe not having a designated third pitch, but let's say about... 15% of his pitch usage is dedicated to his curveball and changeup. I think that could just help him be a little less predictable. Um, you know, I think his fastball and slider are certainly good enough to be a two-pitch pitcher. And again, he almost won a Cy Young twice being a two-pitch pitcher. So I don't want that to get lost in, in the mix here. But, you know, when we're talking about like third time through the order penalties, you know, those get like exponentially worse for two-pitch pitchers versus a three-pitch pitcher, a four-pitch pitcher, or just somebody who has a deeper arsenal. If you look at a guy like Garrett Cole, for example... It's not just the fact that he has some of the best stuff in the league. It's the fact that he can kind of mix it all in there. Is his changeup a very uh, highly used pitch? No, but he can kind of throw it in there whenever he needs it. Is his curveball his secondary pitch? No, it's probably a... It's Honestly, it's not even his third pitch anymore. His cutter's become that third pitch for him. Uh, but it's the ability to mix it in there. Again, the cutter, the slider, the four-seamer. He just has an array of weapons, and that helps him a lot. When you look at some of the top starters in the league, it's usually there are a wide array of pitches. But then you could point to a guy like Spencer Strider, right, who is a two-pitch pitcher. But even he added a third pitch. Pitch. He'll be working on his curveball a little bit, and he does have a change that he can throw there every now and then and usually gets good results. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting storyline to follow, and I 100% agree that, you know, how Rodon looks velocity-wise, how he looks in terms of his conditioning... That will certainly set the tone for the Yankees season. I'm not sitting here and saying he has to need he has to put up an elite spring training in terms of results. I don't really care about the results. I just care that the command is there, the health is there, and the stuff is there. But some other guys I'm really interested to look at, you know, looking at some of the other starters that are slated to uh, you know, get the get the nod. You have Luis Heal, who, you know, he's been working on his changeup. So speaking about third pitches, he's been trying to get more of a velocity differential off his four seam fastball. I personally look at Luis Hill as like a huge wild card, a huge question mark, because not that I don't think he can help this team, but I don't know how he'll help this team. Not saying he's not capable, but literally I don't know what role he will be best suited for. The Yankees are going to stretch him out as a starting pitcher. That fourth option helps because they can throw him in AAA and let him get starters reps. He'll be coming off Tommy John surgery, but what we do know is that this is a guy who has great stuff and has a sub-4 career ERA in the major leagues. We can say that, you know, the strikeout to walk rates are a little concerning because he does walk a little bit too many batters, but those are the numbers, right? The numbers say, the numbers say hey, this guy in his major league career has a sub-4 ERA. He also has one of the best fastballs in the organization and a pretty good slider. Even an average changeup, you know, just the ability to throw one will help him greatly. He can get strikeouts against righties at a good enough clip. You know, I'm not saying to compare him to all-star caliber pitchers, but, you know, his stuff is certainly up there. Um, and when I compare him to some other pitchers across the league, the kind of, the guy that I, I always looked at to compare him to when he first came up, even back in 2021, was Freddie Peralta. Freddie Peralta has no idea where the baseball is going, uh, but he has two elite pitches in his four-seamer and a slider, and they're really good. And I think he will might have better stuff than Freddie Peralta. So, you know, I, I look at him and say the upside's certainly there. How he responds in Tommy John surgery will certainly be interesting, but if your worst-case scenario is being a high-octane, a high-upside reliever, that's not bad either. You can always use more bullpen depth, and looking at the uh, amount of guys who are going to hit free agency for the Yankees next year, they have four different guys in the bullpen that are projected to be on the 26-man roster to open the year. Clay Holmes, Jonathan Loisga, Tommy Canley, and Caleb Ferguson. So, finding guys internally to replace them will certainly be important. Uh, on the position player side of things, you know, Ben, ben Rice is a guy who's very popular in, in Yankee prospect circles. He's obviously this big, left-handed power hitter, um, put up a 182 WRC plus in double a struck out just 18.9% of the time 40.9% uh, fly ball rate did not hit a lot of ground balls when you look at power hitters typically as especially as prospects when they're not very polished they have one of two flaws they're they have a bat path issue that results in either too many strikeouts or they have a bat path issue that results in too many ground balls an example of a ground ball guy would be like Spencer Jones an example of a, a guy with too many strikeouts would be like Everson Pereira Ben Rice doesn't have either issue. He lifts the ball in the air plenty. He pulls the ball in the air a lot. He has a 50.3% pull percentage as a whole. Um, he had a 401 OBP. He struck out just 18.9% of the time in AA. I think this is a big time bat at some point down the road in his major league career. I know he's going to end up debuting in his age, like 25 or age 26 season next year. And I know that that might concern a couple of people, but there are plenty of pretty good hitters who have been later in terms of their timelines. Ben Rice had a very unique journey to the uh, professional game. He had to play, uh, you know, two years without any organized college baseball because he played at an Ivy League school. No 2021 season, unlike NCAA schools, which did play that year. And that was the year he was drafted. So imagine your final two years of college eligibility. You don't play baseball. You play unorganized baseball. You play kind of leagues you scrap together. The competition isn't great, and, and you don't get a lot of at-bats, and you don't get a lot of professional at-bats. You know, those kind of situations can certainly hurt a prospect's stock, but 
I think he really broke out last year. I think the organization really likes him, and that's a guy I'm certainly looking for, uh, looking forward to watching. Um, and then Strowman's debut, I don't know if we'll get to watch it. I don't know if that'll be streamed. The same thing is uh, true for like a Luis Heel start. I don't know if that game will be streamed. Um, but what we do know is that Strowman is going to be an integral part of this rotation. Strowman wasn't brought in to win a Cy Young, but Strowman was brought in to stabilize the middle of that rotation so that if one or two, if not both of Rodon and Cortez are not able to bounce back, you have a guy in Marcus Stroman who can give you, you know, solid starts in and out. The kind of the role I look at him as is that 2021 Jordan Montgomery role where Monty was a solid starter that year. I think he put up like a 3.83 ERA, made 30 starts, 150 innings, 160 innings, excuse me. Um, and, and I would certainly take that out of Marcus Stroman. I know that, you know, he was an all-star last year. And, and I guess that that's something that you look at and say, you hope he repeats that all-star first half. But I'm just looking at him to stabilize the middle of that rotation. So there's a lot of interesting young players. There are a lot of uh, interesting veterans, but I think the biggest thing that everyone's going to follow, and understandably so, is Juan Soto. Juan Soto will be playing for the New York Yankees for the first time this weekend. And I don't want to like sound like a fanboy here, but I mean, actually, I do want to sound like a fanboy. This is the most exciting spring training moment I've had as a Yankee fan in a very long time, like, we didn't really get the proper spring training experience when Garrett Cole came over to the Yankees, I feel like. The COVID pandemic was kind of looming over at that point. The question of whether games would continue was already a thing. Um, we don't have that question with Juan Soto in spring training right now. We will get to see Juan Soto play baseball. Aiden, I don't think it's an understatement to say this is must-watch box office TV. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm tuning in to that game against the Blue Jays to, A, watch... Carlos Rodon, because that's my huge narrative this year. But, like, I cannot just, even though it's not in the pinstripes, it's just the spring training uniforms. Seeing Juan Soto play on my side is just like, that's the most exciting storyline that the Yankees can have right now. Um, but, you know, I think we kind of know what we're getting from him. So, like, we're just hoping we see some bombs from him. I I'm sure he's going to be working on his approach. Um, but, you know, It'll be nice to see, like, maybe his approach is going to trickle down to other players. Something I've seen, um, just just like tea leaves, just seeing in videos coming out of spring training. Um, Everson Pereira has been spending a lot of time around Juan Soto. I, I saw it a bit throughout the week, and then this morning, or early this afternoon, I saw, I, I think, I, I believe, Chris Kirshner tweeted a video of Everson Pereira and Juan Soto talking just right next to the batting cage. And that's someone, you know, I think people should still be keeping an eye on throughout spring training. Everson Pereira, you know, he came up last year and he didn't look great. What we saw from him was um, his exit velocity was there. I think that was, you know, the, the big shining part of Pereira's game that we saw in the month, month and a half that he was up. But that's the what we want to look for from him or what I'm looking for at the very least is is he going to be making more contact is it, is he adjusting his launch angle at all is he going to be like something I think he can do while his exit velocity is great maybe he can sell some of that out just to make more contact with the ball because you know it, he was just striking out and whiffing a lot like he it was just swing and miss after swing and miss and you know, I, I, when he came up, I was confident that this guy could be, you know, a well above league average bat. But, you know, my confidence dropped a little. I know it was only about a month sample size of games, but, you know, he's got to make his case and he's got to make it quick because he's kind of a fringe AAA MLB player right now. I guess you could call it quadruple A, especially with how crowded the Yankees outfield is now. They went from having a horrific outfield that Pereira had an easy spot to play in to now it's really crowded and Trent Grisham is your fourth outfielder. You got Verdugo and left, Judge and center and Soto and right. You even have Stanton who could play some outfield too. You have Oswaldo Cabrera who could play some outfield. So Pereira's got to make his case. We want to see him make more contact, but you know, still lift the ball, still pull those fly balls because I think there's a lot of potential in that, that bat of his, but you know, he's got to make his case. And then, you know, it, I, I would even think that maybe the Yankees are hoping that he shows like some some results and he looks good so that maybe he could be packaged and traded somewhere at some point in the season because there's just not it really a spot for him but I would I would like to see him on this team down the line because I think he's super talented same thing with Oswaldo Cabrera he's got to make his case too um you know I, I saw that he's 
he's going to be batting lefty against some lefty pitchers now, which is a huge development, I think, for him because, you know, what does that say about him hitting from the right side? Like, is is he maybe getting more confident? Just like, hey, maybe I'll just hit from the left side full time. Um, did he adjust his launch angle? Ryan, I, you wrote that fantastic article uh, towards the end of last season that he adjusted his launch angle last spring training, and it didn't work out for him. He was hitting a lot of ground balls. He wasn't the, pulling the ball. So if we're seeing Oswaldo this weekend, I would like to see him pull fly balls. That's, I mean, obviously you want to see almost every hitter do that because that's the key to success in the league these days. But, you know, that that's what I want to see from Oswaldo. Um, you know, he's... He has potential to be a huge utility guy for the Yankees. I, I imagine that if someone goes down, the Yankees would like to bring him up because he can play almost anywhere. Like if DJ LeMay, he gets hurt, you know, that's 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 where he plays. Or if, you know, Verdugo, God forbid, Judge gets hurt, Oswaldo might be, might be playing some outfield. But um, I guess a couple other position players I'm looking at, um, Yorbit Vivas, I'm, I'm really excited to see what what he's got, um, what how how he feels, what his glove is like, um, if he can lift the ball more. I know he had some ground ball issues at AAA last year. Um, Peraza, I, I hope he shows signs of life because you know the the, the line's getting kind of thin for him. It's it's getting short. Um, and like you said, Ryan, I just I can't wait to see Statcast data for Ben Rice because he looks like the best hitter in the Yankees farm system right now. And just just seeing raw. Stat cast out of from him. What his launch angle, exit velocity looks like. I'm I'm really excited for that. I think that you know we talked about him debuting next year. I think he can make an impact on this team this year. Um, but uh, like you said, Luis Heel too. Um, there, we'll see a lot of pitchers over the course of spring training. I think you know we're gonna see Cody Petit, Will Warren, Chase Hampton, Clayton Beater. Um, I, I, this is a really exciting spring training for me. I think a lot of the non-roster invites are really exciting, but you know, that's, that's, that's what I got. I mean, I, I'm really excited to watch these games. I know tomorrow's game won't be streamed. Um, the game versus the, versus the Blue Jays will be, will be on. Yes. I was a little unsure if the game, the split, the other split squad game against Philly will be Stroman start. It, it will be Stroman start. That's going to be on the Philly Sports Network. So if you have MLB at bat, you can watch both games this weekend on Sunday. So yeah, Ryan, I'm, I'm really excited for this spring training. It's going to be a ton of fun. I agree. There are a lot of like, you kind of mentioned like the non-roster invites. Aaron Boone said this is like the best crop of non-roster invite pitcher they've had in a while. Um, and there's just like, this is a very interesting spring training group. Not in the, like a bad way, just like in the sense of like the vibes, right? I just feel like the vibes are immaculate right now. Look, it's pretty easy to fix the vibes when you say, all right, guys, I know we had a bad year last year. Here's Juan Soto, by the way. Like, hard to, it's hard to top that, right? Like, they weren't getting Shohei Otani. So, outside of that, there was literally nothing else I think would make the, anyone happier than, you know, the acquisition of Juan Soto. Um, you know, and, and looking at the state of the team, I feel good about this roster. This is the most complete Yankee roster they've had, I think, in a while. I feel like in 2021, it was like, hold your breath about left field, hold your breath about third base. Hold your breath about even, like, where, what was going on at second base, because, like, LeMahieu and, and Torres were going to battle it out for a second base job or whatever. It was a weird team, and, and it was a very um, interesting team for all of the wrong reasons, I feel like. And and this year's team, you know, this time last year, like, Montas already had, like, season-ending shoulder surgery, and, and guys were already getting banged up. Um, and, you know, I'm not, this is not entirely related to the episode, Aiden, but, like, I saw this while you were talking. Um, I don't know if you saw it, too. Jeff Fasson, uh, he mentioned that uh, regarding Blake Snell, who I don't think will be a Yankee. Like I, this is the most confusing free agent saga ever. But he he says uh, that the Yankees make the most sense for Blake Snell, and that he believes it'll come down to the Yankees and the Angels. I, sure, uh, like I don't. I'm not saying that like the media situation. Uh, I'm not trying to comment on that. But like I am not enjoying free agency sometimes. Like I don't know what to believe. I assume I'm supposed to believe Jeff Passano for everybody else. It's kind of like the rule of thumb with baseball. Um, but this is a confusing saga. Thankfully, 
We only, right now we can focus on spring training games. It's not like the middle of January where we have a month to ponder on one comment made by Jeff Passan. Uh, but with that being said, let us know what you guys think are the most interesting storylines to follow in spring training, at, at least uh, this upcoming weekend. We're really excited for games to kick off. And if you guys want coverage on games, on updates, news, I mean, I just mentioned the Blake Snell thing. I, I, I imagine you want updates on that too. Fireside Yankees is your one-stop shop for Yankee content. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and we're also on Twitter. This YouTube page is to also, uh, you know, subscribe, give a little like, comment, uh, turn on the notification bell for our TikToks and all that stuff. Aiden does a great job making short form content for us. So make sure you guys check that out as well. We're pumping up plenty of content. So you guys definitely want to be following us, following what we got cooking. And you guys can check out EmpireSportsMedia.com for written coverage on all of your favorite New York sports teams, including the Yankees. Uh, and you guys can follow our Twitter accounts. Our personal Twitter accounts are above our heads. Thank you again for stopping by and watching to the end of the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.